Ski-Doo Expedition Sport 600 EFI Pre-Season Maintenance. The Ski-Doo Owner's Manual outlines a very comprehensive pre-season maintenance procedure. Today, we'll use the 2021 Expedition Sport 600 EFI to follow the pre-season maintenance schedule as closely as we can in a home garage. We'll start on the left side of the sled. Remove the left panel and clutch cover. We'll need to remove the belt, so use the Torx head tool from the clutch cover and thread it into the opening on the secondary clutch. Thread it fully until it won't go any further. This will open up the secondary clutch plate so we can remove the belt, and will also make it easier to clean the clutch plate surfaces. Now we'll inspect and measure wear on the drive belt. This drive belt has about 1200 kilometers of use, and my spare is a new, unused ski -Doo belt. My drive belt isn't cracked or frayed and measures 36.5 millimeters wide. My new, unused spare belt measures 37 millimeters wide. Worn ski -Doo belts will start causing shift problems with about 1.5 millimeters of wear. Since my belt only has 0.5 millimeters of wear, we'll reuse it this season. Next steps will be easier with the track off the ground. I'm using a ratchet strap to lift the rear of the sled a few inches off the floor so I can turn the secondary clutch. Using a scouring pad, clean both the inner clutch plates. You'll want to remove any remnants of belt material from the clutch surface. With our track off the ground, it's easy to spin the secondary clutch so you can clean the entire clutch surface. Now we'll clean the driven clutch. Same deal here. Clean both sides of the inner clutch. Make sure your key is out of the ignition and your emergency stop switch is in the off position before turning the driven clutch by hand. This step doubles as a chance to turn the engine over by hand before we try starting it. While not outlined in the pre-season maintenance procedure, I always like to turn over a stored engine manually before starting it to determine if it's moving smoothly through compression and exhaust strokes or if there's any unexpected friction. This one is smooth as silk. With clutch surfaces cleaned, we can reinstall our drive belt. Pay attention to the rotation direction of the belt. It should rotate in the marked direction when propelling the snowmobile forward. Fish the drive belt through the driven clutch first, then wrestle it over the secondary clutch. We can now fully unthread the Torx head tool from the secondary clutch. Rotate the secondary clutch by hand a few times to get the clutch to close and the belt to seat. Now we'll check the drive belt height. On 600 EFI models, the belt should sit flush with the secondary clutch plates. Note that ACE and ETEC models have different parameters. Using my micrometer as a flat edge, I can clearly see that my drive belt is sitting slightly too high, so I'll loosen the clutch pulley retainer screw. Next, I'll use the suspension adjustment tool, which is also contained in the clutch cover, to rotate the clutch retainer one quarter of a turn at a time. After each adjustment, I'll rotate the secondary clutch several times to allow the belt to seat naturally, and I'll check the belt height again. To get my belt just right, I only needed about one-eighth of a turn of adjustment. With my drive belt height adjusted, it's time to re-torque the clutch pulley retainer. This retainer is a critical part of your drivetrain, so get your torque wrench out and torque it properly. The correct torque spec is 49 inch-pounds. In the next step, we'll kill two birds with one stone, maybe even three. 
Apply the snowmobile's parking brake, then try to turn the secondary clutch by hand. This verifies that the parking brake system is functioning, parking brake is working, and we can check chain tension all at once. Attempt to rotate the secondary clutch. It should move one quarter to one half of an inch. If it spins freely, then you have a problem with your braking system. If it moves less than one quarter of an inch, your brakes work, but your chain has too much tension. If it moves more than one half of an inch, then your chain tension is too low. This one moves only about three eighths of an inch, then stops, meaning the brakes work, the parking brake is functioning, and my chain tension has the correct amount of tension. Now we can replace the clutch cover. Make sure the suspension adjustment tool and Torx head tool are both properly stored in the clutch cover. While we're in here, let's make sure our oil is topped up for the season with genuine XPS full synthetic oil. This one was filled in spring to avoid condensation in the tank, so we don't need to add any right now. We've already verified that the braking system is functioning, but let's take a moment to inspect the brake pads and rotor. This one has lots of pad and rotor left, so there's no need to open up the brake cover today. We're done on the left side of the sled, so let's close it up. Next, we'll use a track tension gauge to check the track tension. On the top, there's a rubber ring as we push the plunger, the ring will let us know how many pounds of force we've applied. At the bottom, there's a ring that can be set to the desired deflection. This Expedition 600 EFI specifies in the owner's manual 4 to 5 centimeters of deflection with 16 pounds of force applied. This track is 5 centimeters of deflection with 16 pounds of force, so it's at the looser end of the specification. I checked with my dealer and they advised not to adjust the track tension until it's out of spec. While we're under here, we'll check the idler wheels and track alignment. Spacing of these metal cleats must be equal on both sides of the track. Everything looks excellent. Next, we'll get into the right side of the sled. The first thing I notice is that the coolant is low, but before filling the reservoir, I'm going to check the coolant density. The coolant density is measured with an antifreeze hydrometer, which costs about $9 at Canadian Tire. With the hydrometer's hose in the coolant, squeeze the bulb and let the hydrometer fill up to or past the fill line. If you're past the fill line, Lift the hose out of the fluid and squeeze the bulb a bit to let some coolant out until you reach the fill line. The needle will point to the freezing point of your coolant. This one has the needle pinned at minus 45 degrees Celsius, so the coolant is fine. I'll pump the rest back into the tank and top it off with XPS coolant to just below the full line.
takes about one bottle of XPS oil. We pour the oil into the fill hole until it starts leaking out the check plug hole. There it is, oil draining out of the check plug hole. Once it stops, wipe the excess and replace the check plug, torquing it also to 53 inch pounds. Now just replace the filler plug before reinstalling the right side cover. Climbing on the machine, we'll check the overall functionality of the steering. We're looking for both skis to steer and for any unusual friction in the steering mechanism. This expedition is working perfectly. Checking the ski alignment with a tape measure. We'll need to measure the distance between the rear alignment markers, the front alignment markers, then subtract the two. We're looking for one quarter to one half of an inch of toe out. That's to say the measurement at the front marker should be one quarter to one half of an inch longer than the rear measurement. On this sled, I'm measuring 36 and one half at the rear marker and 36 and 15 sixteenths at the front marker. That's 7 sixteenths of toe out, which is within spec. There's no adjustment necessary. Before starting the engine, we'll need to charge the battery. With the passenger backrest removed, pull the tabs at the front of the seat. It always amazes me how hard I need to pull these tabs to get them unhooked. With the front unhooked, slide the seat rearward to detach the remaining retainers, then guide the seat under the two up handle strap. Make sure to place your seat on a soft material. Putting it directly on a coarse garage floor is a sure way to start a tear in the seat. Now, towards the rear of the machine, remove the battery cover by undoing the two Torx bolts. ski -Doo recommends removing the battery connections before charging the battery, and they advise us to always remove the negative terminal before the positive. I'm gonna come clean here, I didn't disconnect the battery before charging. Just hooked up my slow charger, positive terminal on the left, negative on the right, and let it charge overnight. Once charged, reinstall the battery cover, torquing the retaining bolts to, that's about right, Newton feet. To reinstall the seat, first guide it under the two up handle strap, then make sure the rear and center retainers are engaged before locking the front retainers. Next, I'll install my modified Link Q accessories. Pull the rag out of the exhaust that we installed last spring, and then it's time to fire up the 600 EFI. Checking high beam and low beam operation, and checking the emergency stop switch. A quick walk around looking for loose components, a wipe down to remove dust and grease, and of course, affixing my Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs 2022 season pass. In addition to what you've seen here, if you hadn't already done so when you put your sled away in the spring, you should lube your suspension both front and rear, and check your brake fluid level. Now, let's all pray for some snow so we can start enjoying the trails this season.